They're not taking advantage of you, you're just not setting boundaries for them. I mean, it's, it's not that they're taking advantage, it's just that you're not putting up an ba appropriate boundary. So again, it, both could describe the same experience, but they have different implications. Consequence, on the other hand, would be something that believing this can certainly put you at a disadvantage in a relationship. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to a consequence of this belief. If you really believe this, you know, obviously you're going to be disadvantaged in any relationship you go to. So maybe that's a different frame in which, which to evaluate your own belief. It's, re it's a consequence that would cause you to reframe it. One more example. Robert, yeah. One thing it reminds me of is reading a book on uh, cognitive therapy with uh, eating disorder. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the major techniques that we're talking about is uh, you, don't, you, know, you don't argue with the girl and say, well, you really are you know, too thin. You say, you, your weight might be perfectly fine as far as you're concerned, and if you keep doing this, you'll die. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's okay with me if you believe that that's a nice weight for you. But right. Not Pacing and leading is what this, again, the basic principle of any influence and all influence, the most underlying principle, I don't care what technique or what else you're using, is pacing and leading. You start right off leading and going, no, that's not the case. I don't care whether you're using slider mouth or not, you are going to create resistance for yourself. I don't care whether you're anchoring, even if you can even be doing reframing with somebody and not be pacing them. So pacing means I acknowledge, I start with the belief and I start where the person is and then lead on to some other frame, some other consequence, some other meaning. I, but I'm going to pace it first. Anytime I try to lead first, I'm going to set myself up for creating resistance. So, let's take the next one. I always find this one interesting. You were late. So that means you don't care about me. You're always late. So you don't care about me. Uh, you can redefine it. Well, I wasn't late. I was just delayed a little bit. And which, by the way, that's again one of those ones that takes it from a personal to an environmental. What, why does that work? Because it says, well, it's the same, the same end result, but delayed means it was an environmental factor out of my control. Being late means it was something that I did. So again, you move it to a different logical level. You don't care about me. I'm not uncaring, just forgetful. <laughs> so you just say, well, it's not that... Again, it's not that I'm uncaring belief kind of level, it's about capability. I don't remember things well. So again, each one could account for the same experience, but has a different implication. Consequence. Well, if I didn't stay late to finish, we would have been interrupted later on, and I really wanted to have the best quality time, as opposed to quantity. So again, a consequence of my not being late is that we would have been interrupted, you know, would have come back and gotten me later even worse. So, again, you go to a consequence that reflects it. By the way, again, here's where pacing and leading comes in. <laughs> you know, if you have somebody who's angry with you and they need to be attended to and you're going, and you're defending yourself instead of attending to them, you know, slide of mouth can get you in more trouble. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is remember the pacing. Part of this is going to depend upon the state that the person is in when they're saying it is going to determine also how you want to go with the belief. Um, here's the saying mean things means you're a bad person. Redefining mean things. Well, I wasn't saying mean things. I was just letting off a little steam. <laughs> Again, same thing, different Im implication. You're, you're a bad person. I'm not a bad person. I just don't mince my words. Again, taking it from an identity, moving it down a level to capabilities or beliefs. Yeah, here's the if I didn't say mean things, I do them as a consequence. Let's go to the next one because I think this is sort of common ones. This is sort of a sales example. Some people that are really good at sleight of mouth, people that work in sales. So somebody goes, ah, I can't, this house is too expensive, I can't afford it. So you redefine too expensive. You say, well, it's not that it's too expensive, it's just that it has exceptional value, <laughs> you know, which is I mean, in other words, it's both accounting for the same thing, but it's not too expensive. It has a lot of value. Different implication. I can't afford it. Well, it's not that you can't afford it. It's that you're unwilling to make this big of an investment. You know. Well, again, and people will say that. They'll, I've, I've heard people say things like that. It could be computers. It could be houses. I don't care. Those are standard kinds of redefines. Cons yeah. Isn't 
that taking that down from capability to behavior? Actually, it's it's um, saying I can't afford it is a capability. Saying that you're unwilling is starting to take it up to more of a an identity belief type of an issue. That you it's something about you, not to see here I can't afford it is more about my capability. I don't have the capability to afford it. The other one is saying, well, you're not willing to make the commitment, which is not about capability, it's about a belief level. Consequence. Going classic classic sales consequence. Well, if you pass up this opportunity now, you might never get another chance and the <laughs> costs are just going to be going up in the future, you know. So in other words, you may think it's expensive now, but wait till two years from now, you know, it'll be completely impossible. So I've had, I remember, I was going to buy a car and this guy says, you know, didn't you ever come in and you were going to buy a sweater and when you came back in the next day, you thought about it and thought about it and you decided you, you didn't want it and then that night you really thought you wanted it and when you came back in, somebody else had already bought it, you know. Again, this is a classic going to a consequence that if you don't get it now, it may not be here for you later. So, let's go to the last example, which is a health example. And it's beliefs, common types of beliefs that cancer caused people to die. And what you do to redefine it is to say, well, it isn't really cancer that causes people to die, but the breakdown of their body systems and immune systems. Therefore, let's focus on, on how to build up those body systems, because it isn't really the cancer that does it, it's your body systems failing that causes death. It's a redefine. Cancer causes death. Now, cancer doesn't cause death, it causes the loss of will to live. Uh, and this, so can beliefs like this. Now that's, of course, is taking it up a level to will to live is more on a belief and identity level as opposed to a specific behavior level. So here, again, you're redefining to open up new possibilities. Consequence, beliefs like this can become self-fulfilling prophecies because people stop exploring other options. If you really believe that, what's the use of exploring anything else? Of course, it'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So that would be a way of using the consequence situation like that. Now, we have about <laughs> we have 10 minutes left, but since there's only 10 minutes, that just means that we'll be able to really combine the quality of time that we have in that space to really do a great exercise, which we can continue after lunch. And what, I, what I'd like to do is to just start, maybe have you do a first round before lunch break. And that, what I'd like to have you do is to get back into your groups of threes. I'd like to have the person who stated the beliefs, you, you, you stated two beliefs, a limiting belief and a resourceful belief. What I'd like to have you do is this. Have one of the people choose their limiting belief and state it. Have person number two redefine some of the elements of that belief using one of these strategies of like leading it to something that may be more positive or shift it to a different level. And by the way, at this stage, just. I suggest that you start just doing it intuitively. Don't try and do it logically. Just try and say, okay, how do I redefine this? What is something, how can I respond to this if I were to use this category? Just see what you can do spontaneously and naturally. That's always much better than trying to figure out and make yourself do it, put effort into it. So person two, try to redefine some element of what they were saying. So for example, if you say, I'm disorganized, I say, well, not. it's not that you're disorganized. It's just that you haven't found the right priorities for the things that you're working with yet. That's a different implication. It's not that you're disorganized, it's just that you need to find the priorities that these things fit into. It could, again, it's, 